What was the worst gift you ever got? When you got me no gift. <laughs> nothing. Not well, anything. Not I, a dinner. I, I, no, no, that was your birthday. Yeah, nothing. That's, that's not Christmas. I bought you something. It doesn't matter. You said, what's the worst gift? I'm glad you've got over it, though. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 20 of Couples Quarantine and incredibly could be the last episode, we don't know. I've tried to be Christmassy, Chloe's got a Christmassy onesie on. Um, first of all, how are you babe? I'm okay, yeah, I'm good. A little bit frazzled, just trying to get everything done. Obviously, two, three podcasts, a book, two coaching platforms. And a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, it's been like absolute carnage this December. I think this is probably the busiest December I've ever had, but... I am aware how lucky I am that I can actually say that because I know uh, that a lot of people out there are really worried and struggling right now. So it's a good thing. And obviously a lot of the people's plans are going to be changed and hammered. So hopefully couples quarantine will bring you a little bit of light entertainment. Um, Our plans have been thrown into, well, fucked into a cocked hat, I think is the expression. So they put, then everybody was all ready and excited to see each other for Christmas, I'm sure. A lot of you can relate to this. And then all of a sudden, James's family's in tier four. My family's in tier four. Uh, so actually, we're not seeing anyone. Yeah. But, but us, each other and the dog. But it's absolute carnage. Now, the dog that's normally running around, we actually took him to a dog shop for the first time. Pets at home. Let's not plug for pets at home because we didn't. We paid for everything. I think Chloe spent, well, I'm not even going to say what she spent. Too much. But he's now, we took him for a big walk and he's now perfectly sleeping in a bed like an angel. You know, like they say they've worked with animals and kids. Well, he's been unbelievably well behaved. But Chloe, do you want to tell him what you bought from pets at home? Because you've turned into the mad dog lady and this will really encapsulate it. I bought him a, a little scarf, which I'm not going to lie, makes him 10 times funnier than he's ever been. And it actually matches his coat. It matches his coat. It's got a little bobble on the end of it because, you know, how they tie through the middle. That's how it, they've made it look. And it's got a little bobble on the end of it that's the exact same colour as his coat. So it suits him to a T. Uh, it's like grey and white knitted with a little kind of beige ball. Yeah, lovely. Anyway, Great attention to detail. I also got him um, a flat cap. <laughs> Like a little posh tweed p- A little flat cap. posh tweed fat, flat cap, which looks absolutely fantastic on him. But if we put it behind the ears, then he gets very grumpy. So we, he's not wearing it, right? Um, but we did manage to get a couple of great photos because we live in a world where, if you don't share it on Instagram, did it really happen? Um, and of course, we bought these ridiculous outfits to just put them on and see whether people like them. But we've also bought him a collar with a miniature bow tie. Oh, yeah, because Bertie. I mean, we didn't name him. We we inherited him as Bertie. And so I just think Bertie wears a bow tie. Bertie does wear Surely. a bow tie, apparently. Um, also, it was our wedding anniversary. Yes. Two years together. Apparently you get less for murder these six days. Six years together. Two so, years Two married. years married, so six yeah. years together. Uh, do you want to tell everyone how, what I pulled out of the bag? Yeah, James, delivered? James took me to my to one of our favourite spots in London. It's a hotel called the Lanesborough. It's very yeah. traditional and it's not... Fancy is the wrong word. I would just go with traditional. When I think fancy, I think like the Ritz, but it's not like that. It's, yeah, it's amazing. And then he, we had dinner and then we, we had a massage and then he smoked cigars in the gentleman's garden room and all Cl- night. And Chloe drunk tequila. Um, yeah, I got really drunk. <laughs> so. I went to bed, made sweet, sweet love, um, relaxed, had uh, breakfast in bed and we were back. And then we were, had another plan. I planned something else for Christmas, which was going to, it's going to happen. But then London went into tier four and the wheels fell off. Yeah. And now where we are, where we are. You booked Dorchester. I did book the Dorchester. That's a fancy hotel. But it's, I think it's like... Some... Just in case people are rolling, James and I don't give gifts. What we do is we book, we do like a night in a hotel and a dinner. Um, oh, experiences. And yeah, because we're not really, James A doesn't have the time or the knowledge of how to gift, give me a gift well and I do I, I do it's something thoughtful and kind and I I, I do listen to stuff like gold jewelry no, like, what well, I like I like going I like a like romantic evening yes and then and for you I just yeah. I can't buy you gifts because you have everything you want and you you, you know you make more money than I've got me, everything in you babe that's what I need yeah so date nights are our thing but we um, we were going to do a drinking game with Christmas right we were going to get steaming a shot of beer um, on the hour or sorry on the minute every minute but unfortunately Old foodle man's over here's not been that well, and we don't think combining a huge drink off is a great <laughs> is a great is a great idea. But we've always got a theme of this show, which was all about Christmas, Christmas nightmare, presents, nightmares, and then we're going to do a bit of business as usual. But we left off last week's show with Chloe. Well, first of all, if you listen to the episode, please go back or haven't, please go back and listen to it. But we're coming up with names, and I I um, came up with a couple for dirty movies: uh, Temple of Poom 
um, Raiders of the Lost Arse. <laughs> Chloe, we were talking about some serious matters, and the whole way I could tell Chloe's attention wasn't on the show because she went, she's like straining, you know, like when a kid goes off into the corner of the room and does a poo. Chloe's face was that, and she came and went, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Boob. <laughs> right? I actually think that sounds like a riveting movie. Yeah, I mean, a big goblet of boob, it depends, right? I don't know, but how big is a goblet? But then you, you finished Madonna off. Madonna made a career out of goblets of boob. You, she did, <laughs> road cones of boobs. What did you finish with, though? Oh, um, oh, Star Wars, Return of the Jap side. <laughs> Return of the Jap Which I actually thought was the best one it ever. It was great. Them. Now, Chloe, I want you to give me a thumbs up on these because we've got these is sent this in. Is this from Ollie? Well, we're not, yes, this, this is from This is from one of yeah. my clients and yeah. he literally uh, messaged me when he did it and was like, just so you know, I've sent a great list of... Okay, uh, are you guys at home, let us know. Please uh, tweet us or, or Instagram us, uh, Couples Quarantine Pod, Couples Quarantine. Uh, you'll be easily be able to find us with the, the funny red car- caricature drawn by... Um, Oh, Angry Bunnies. Name. Angry Bunny illustrations. Fantastic guy on Instagram. Right. Forest Cum Dump. Oh, that's a bit... Ugh. I find that would probably be a gay movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be for gay, for gay men. Do you um, watch gay porn? No. Have you ever? <laughs> <laughs> As if you fucking, on the Christmas episode, I've watched have come porn. at me for that. I've watched gay porn. Yeah, I mean, like, this, I've seen it. I've gone into Prowler a few times. It's on the, it's on the cameras. You can't, I love you can't, Prowler. You can't not anybody, see it. Anybody who's not from London comes to London, go to Soho and go to Prowler. It's such a good show. But do you know what? I had a big moment because the Jurda's dad calendar, which I talk about in my autobiography, What a Flank, a great Christmas present. But um, it's uh, it a very famous calendar. It was the biggest selling calendar of Europe and the biggest selling gay calendar. And I was on the front cover of it when I walked to the Prowler the first time and I was looking at some sex toys. Um, just a real big sort of butt plug for myself. <laughs> I'm joking, it wasn't. I thought you didn't have sex before me. I didn't. I didn't. I was thinking about it, like just oh, prepping. Right. right. Research. Research. Like you've got to research. Yeah. Like, you know, um, you know like, let, let, let seven years to be a doctor, but they don't let you doctor for at least a couple. You know? <laughs> they don't let you doctor. It's Do- not a verb. Doctoring is a thing. Yeah, you, it uh, is, actually. To doctor. Yeah, to doctor. Are you doctoring right now? Oh, I'm doctoring. I, well, I'm doctoring would be to uh, fiddle with uh, a document. I'm doctoring a document would be to oh, uh, yeah, yeah. doctor a passport. With, or doctor a th- no, yeah. Anyway, carry you know on. what I'm saying. So anyway, I went in there, and when I came to buy what I was buying, the guy who was doing a double take, he went, yo, and I thought this is a big moment for me, because no one ever recognised me, yo, are you on the front cover of the calendar? I was like, yeah, and they were like, lads, all these people like perusing tight pants, huge dillies, like everything, came and stopped, and I had a little moment, I had a little photo with everyone, it was a big day. Yeah, you're, 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 you're the happiest when you get gay attention. Oh yeah, because it's such a compliment, women wouldn't even piss on me if we're on fire. Why Men do give you me keep absolute... saying Because I this. don't get that, I, you know, you've seen who's interested in me. And it's, you know. You're very attractive. I get comments on Instagram all the time, mm. like, Chloe's so lucky. Wow. I'm, I get comments all the time, how lucky I am with you. Oh. People always like, I do. Uh, everyone's like, shut the fuck okay. up and move on. Shaving Ryan's privates. Good. Yeah, I heard it before. Good. Edward Penis Hands. <laughs> I imagine that'd be a game. Like a date again. with him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this is a bit of a niche one. Reservoir Dogging. Great. And great movie, too. But I reckon, thing is, I reckon Reservoir Dogging would be for those people who used to send in their pictures of their vagina and tits to, like, Razzle or Escort for 20 sheets. You know those big, big, pink, big red vaginas we got shaving rash? Like, I'm just thinking of all the Reservoir Dogs now. Debbie from... Dogging. Deb- Mr. Pink, how appropriate. Oh, Debbie from Norwich with a big, fanny, big fat vagina We're getting paid 20 sheets. Um, Why does she have it? What makes a vagina big and fat? Well, no, it's just, you know, because they're bigger ladies... You know, and they've got a big sort of. They got the so offensive. No, <laughs> people who people who listen to man. it. Fuck off, people who listen to this, right? Who know about escort and razzle back in the day? Nave club, right? All these porn things. Nave, Nave, yeah, K N A V E. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't come up with them. I'm not in charge. I wasn't Paul Raymond. I'm not making up these porn mags, right? Escort was the one. So you get a copy of Escort. You get like Deb. Uh, you know, you get like Claire from North Hants, right? And she picture of a, a vagina, but she, she's a bigger lady. It's a big old vag, but it's got shaving rash. It's red, so it looks like a big smacked. No, yeah, this you know is what the I'm most offensive thing. Chloe, right, let's Chloe, move on. right? Okay, fine. <laughs> Fucking right in. Tell me I'm a can, but it's true, right? Batman instead of Batman. Oh, fine, great, good, simple. Combinator. Great. <laughs> bend it in, bend it in Beckham. Imagine that's another I think a few movie. people would like to do yeah. that. Top come. Great. I like the easy ones. Escape from New Pork. I don't get it. Escape from New York. It was with... Uh, no, I know, but what's New Pork? New York. New Pork. Porking bird. Porking. Uh, okay. No, not no, no, Okay. The Coming Man. So the Running Man. Good. 
Uncle Fuck instead of Uncle Buck. Very good. I like these simple ones. <laughs> this is terrible, Ollie. You're going to hell. Blood Sport. Oh, oh of, uh, very good. Yeah, very you, you good. Know, like yes, Van Damme movie. Yeah. Do you know what? The, when I, one year I went to Spain, um, and the Spanish is quite fruity, and I went to a Spanish porn um, establishment, uh, and I'm having, you know, I was there and I was looking around, and I, I didn't even know that like period play was a thing. Uh, that was shocking. And then I didn't know like period play with like women pu- putting needles through their boobs was a thing. I shocked know, me. I know a female celebrity. There's a story. <laughs> There's a story about a female celebrity and at a party and one of one of my friends walked in and there were two two guys yeah. and her and it was a blood sport. Right. No, I'm not And they that. told me about it not and I was that. like, all I've ever wanted to do is ask for about it's it and I never will. But I want to be like, how is this a thing? I know, it's t- t- terrifying. Right. Do you know what the worst porn title of a name video I've ever seen? It shocked me to the very core of my existence. <sighs> Granny incest period porn. Oh, that's distressing. <clears throat> That, that was a cover of a porn title I saw. I was uh, like, uh, there's not one part of that no. at, that I couldn't relate to no, uh, no. being sexy. Never wanted to knock in a granny. Well, Period, I mean, I'll granny, take it. I feel another. like granny, granny porn. No, freshgrannies.com. Fresh grannies. Yeah. Fresh grannies. Known a couple, both like mouldy grannies. I know a couple of guys who are into a granny look. Oh, grannies. Yeah. Not like, not like old, old, but like older. I mean, that's a, those are cougars. No, no, no. Milf, cougar, no, and the no, York no. granny. No, a cougar is a milf and a milf. Granny, a I'm talking about a coo- kicking a Zimmer frame away. A cougar and a milf are the same thing. Yeah, I don't mean like Jack, like granny. I mean like sexy. Okay, so I know somebody who is like, at, she's in her 70s. She's beautiful, glamorous, and cool as fuck. Right. Like that kind of granny. All right. The breakfast chub. Should get your chub on. Another way for erection. Oh, yeah, chub. That's a very American thing, isn't Porn it? Porn tune. As opposed very to good, tune. very good. Coming to America. Good. Very good. Great film. Pile Driving Miss Daisy, maybe my favourite. That's very good. Cum Juice instead of Beetlejuice. Yeah, not good enough. And my favourite of all, this wasn't uh, put in by Ollie's, Beverly Hills Cock. <laughs> very good. <laughs> very good. So I like yeah. those ones. Um, Top Cum I thought was great. Top Cum. Now, obviously we, we put out a few things on social media as to what people's worst gifts were. Uh, we've had some pretty pretty interesting ones. I mean, Chloe, if you'd like to... I've circled the ones that are interesting. I think we should start with our own. Oh, fine, fine. Yeah, good idea. What was the worst gift you ever got? When you got me no gift. <laughs> nothing. Not well, anything. Not I, a dinner. I, 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 no, no, that was your birthday. Yeah, nothing. That's, that's not Christmas. I bought it you doesn't matter. Christmas it's, you said, what's the worst gift? I'm glad you've got over it, though. Yeah. I'm glad that you've got over it. it definitely haven't forgot, you know, like, harboured no, no. that. And, and I quote, I have more important things to do. And the more important thing that he had to do... Was DJ? <laughs> How important is DJ? Don't tell Carl not Cox important. he's got important shit to do. You're not, not Carl shit. Cox. <laughs> I'm pretty similar. Are people you? have said. People have said. Are people, you? Have gone, people have seen me and gone, oh yes, oh yes. You are a big man. I'll give you that. You're welcome. You're not black, so there's a problem number Look one. How cute the dog is, yeah. I know he's so sweet. Yeah. You're also not a mega superstar DJ yet. No, but I am a mega superstar. In my own mind. Fair play. You are a mega superstar. I'm absolutely... Chloe, please. It was a joke. I'm nothing like Carl Cox. No, sportsman. No, I'm in not. In that no, I'm not. sphere. No, I'm bloody not. But I like where your head's at. Do you want to know my worst present? Pillows that your ex gave you and you were like... Yeah, but I haven't who? told that story because you, you... We started... To, James so, tells the story all the time. Right. Who buys somebody pillows? Right, let me explain. Right. Chloe's ruining everything. <laughs> Such a bitch. It's okay. really boring story. It's not a boring story. So, Gracious okay, imagine stuff. this, right? I've been with someone for a while... And I decided to go, you know, go big guns, throw money at the problem. I, you know, I didn't want to think about it, so I thought... I thought that wasn't a problem. The problem of, like, what the fuck do I get? Okay, fine. Right, so got, <laughs> turns out there was a lot of problems. There was a big problem in the she, end. There was a massive problem in the end, and she broke up with me six months later um, after cheating on me. Um, but this isn't even the one you're thinking about. This is the, this is the I know one. who right, this all right, is. Fine. So... I had bought a Chanel quilted handbag for her, gone all out. For those of you who know that. Can I cost- also just say, bravo, because there are very few things that, that you can buy somebody that are guaranteed to stand the test of time and never be a bad buy. Yeah. And a Chanel quilted handbag is very top of that Agreed. list. Do you, do you like one? You can never go wrong with that gift. I don't care for handbags, but, no, but if you, you gave like me one, I'd be like, holy fuck. Fine, noted. Such good taste. Everything, recording. Right, so anyway, I um, first of all, I gave her a stocking, and, and I, I, you know, I've talked about ultimate gifting, Chloe might ask me about that later, but put us really caring stocking together. Well, can uh, we ask you about that? <laughs> she might do. Sounds <laughs> <really>. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> and um, uh, I'm not even drunk enough to do this. So basically, I'm quite tipsy. Are you? You've only had a, you've only I had a know, sip of beer. I know, but I didn't have a break, big breakfast. Oh, yeah. So basically, right, they've done a stocking. She has, I put her stuff down, she's emptied the stocking out and gone, is that it? No, and not knowing there's a fucking handbag under the tree that cost a fortune. Can I just intercept on, at person. this point in the yes. story? Yes. James always references this girlfriend as like they never argued until oh. the end when they broke up. They had this like kind of fairy tale romance where that never, never a rude word. I think, word I think was time has, has made it, has altered it. It was well, a fucking nightmare the whole but way through. How is that? How is that not one of the worst things anyone could ever say to someone when you give them a gift? Is that it? I mean, oh, that's what I mean. Vile I know person. what a cunt, right? So, Lily, <laughs> <laughs> so, you're over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, whoop. so anyway, they, um, they, uh, it's, anyway, to, to, and I was like, in my mind, if you've ever seen the movie Star Wars, I wanted to choke her out with my the, using the Force, just kill her in front of my parents. Not, not a problem. Just go. Did she say that in front of your mum? Yes, dad? everybody. It was the most awkward. I was like, "I'm, you're going to hell," and I would, I would happily chop your head off now in front of everyone. And do you know what? My mum and dad would help me hide the body. Right? Yeah, they would. <laughs> Violence is not the answer, people. But can't. unless you can use the Force, and then it's fine. oh yeah, <laughs> there's no evidence. <laughs> there's evidence. This person just she, she, randomly wait, dropped she dead. She died. Throat closed, and she died. Um, <laughs> And then, um, and then basically, she then proceeded to give me my big present. It was big presents on the tree. I thought, oh, she's going to do well this year. She gave me pillows for a bed. Not, not pillows like neck pillows, like temper pillows, like neck support pillows. The pillows that you use, like, de- you know, for ornamental pillows. The thing that women cover beds in, the unnecessary shit that I cannot understand you would ever want, like, like extra there, bed covers. Isn't there a stand-up routine about this? I think there is somewhere. But well, pillows on bed, and maybe you're like, get rid of it, get rid yeah, of it, get, yeah, or maybe it's a scene in a film. It is, yes. It's, it's a long cane Polly. There with, you go, um, yeah. Yeah, long cane Polly, Ben, ben Stiller, Stiller, yeah. He's like trying to make the bed, and she's like, make the bed, and he makes it, and he's like, fuck the pillows, and she makes him stab the pillows. Yeah. That's why I felt. So I opened them as pillows. I was like, you're, she goes, you're for the new bed. I was like, mm, yeah, thank you. And then she got the handbag, and then she was blown away, and then she she broke up with me six, six months later. So that was. Um, and <laughs> why did she break up with you? I can't remember. Um, I can, it's in your book. What happened? She was cheating on oh, the tennis instructor. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. So she, clearly she was a great person. Yes. I'm, I'm so sorry that uh, you had such a wonderful fairy tale romance so at the end. Were, <laughs> um, sounds like hell. So those are our presents. Um, what we asked out the audience who is grow, ever growing thank you so much for all of you who supported we could do a little recap as well on, on what we've liked you know I'm going to ask Chloe put her under a lot of pressure a bit like Jeremy Paxton Paxman um, Paxton is the guy that makes um, stuffy what um, I kind of fancy Jeremy Paxman do you? yeah I look nothing like it well I don't look anything like Beyonce I don't fancy, fancy Beyonce her, she, Jennifer Lopez yes I mean that is very exactly cool. right um, you know I'm the only like person I know that like doesn't fancy her. I think she's amazing, yeah. but I don't like fan. I don't. That's fine. You don't have to. Everybody loves you don't have her. To fancy her. I just get confused. What am I missing here? You don't. That's not every. I. I lot, you, you and I don't fancy a lot of the same people. Yeah. True. Go on. Right. I fancy his sister. <laughs> Shouldn't exist. It's a joke, right? Go on. What, so, what you had? What are your responses? Obviously, can you not tell? Like, just with five seconds of listening to me, that I come from a whole house of men. I think you're just gobby anyway. Gobby, gobby, gobby. Um. Okay. The worst present that you've ever been given. Herpes. Wow. Yeah. Happy Christmas. Um, a plaster cast on my ex-boyfriend's willy. This isn't actually a thing, right? So if you go to sex shops or online, you can do something called clone a willy, which you do at home using plaster have of Paris. Have you done it? I have. Fuck off. I have. Who got the, the gift? It, it came out. It looked like... Um, <laughs> it looked like... Do you, if you've ever seen the movie... Um, uh, oh, what's it called? Labyrinth with David Bowie, God rest his soul. There's a bloke in it called... Oh, God, um, I mean, can we just all take a second? Yeah, he was the boy, wasn't he? He was just everything. There's a guy in it called... Bo- um, oh, the main character's... Right, you, no, no, I don't care. Just tell the story. Well, no, no, he's, he, he's named Gobble or Boruk or Golok. He's, I look, it looked like his nose with the vibe. Oh, I know who you're talking it. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it now. Um, it, right, you tell right, the next one. And so what, you didn't give it in the end? I wasn't giving it. It was just a bit of fun no, on, on a rainy ironic. day. That's ironic. Because when you think of that, you would think that the penis would be like, you know, drenched in foreskin, if that's how it came out. No, it just, it was just, it, basically, I'd, I'd moulded it without using a measuring jug, like proper stuff, hadn't rested it, and it was just terrible. I was like, Blue Peter. Who were you giving it to? Please say it was a girlfriend. It was a not girlfriend. A <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you Happy imagine? Christmas. Just give it to my mum. No, that's rank. No, after the end of the day. Um, <laughs> now, I know I'm not going to come home with you tonight, but I'd like you to take this in my place. Yeah. Um, okay, right. Oh, um, Hoggle. 
It looked like Hoggle's nose in Labyrinth. Jareth is David Bowie and Hoggle. Please get Google Hoggle. Look, it came out looking like Hoggle's nose. Oh, you look a bit like Hoggle. I don't know if you can see Hoggle right there. <laughs> anyway, right, what have you got next? Um, okay. My boyfriend's mum got me Femme Fresh White. <gasps> what would you do if my old dear got you Femme Fresh White? I would think you'd had a conversation with her and I would be mortified from her and from you and I would absolutely ask the question behind closed doors, why? I did once have a partner who used to have snail trail underwear um, and mum made, made a comment. Your mum made a comment? Because she'd obviously left them on the floor. Mum wow. came to clean the room and was like... You're, that's not very nice of your mother. No, 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 didn't make a comment to her. Oh, made a comment to you? Yeah, I was oh, like... okay, fine. You know, could she not... I was like... It happens sometimes. It does. Uh, women will tell you. I'll tell you right now. Sometimes shit like that happens. Yeah. Just like, uh, I can't think of any boyfriend I've had who hasn't left a skid mark. Yeah, somewhere. apart from me. <laughs> apart from me, cheeky cat. Right. At 16, my girlfriend sent me a t-shirt with her wearing a picture of my uh, of her wearing fishnets and she opened it in front of her, his parents. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Just fishnets. I imagine just fishnets. I mean, I don't know if I would care. The thing is, right, you know when, like, people, like, all photos get leaked of them and yeah. stuff and they freak out? If they've sent the photo, if the photo hasn't been taken of them, but they've mm -hmm. sent it to yeah. this person and then it's leaked, which, by and large, tends to be what happens here, right? Yeah. I don't know that I would care if everybody saw it because I'd be like, yes, I have a body. Yes, I have a sex life. And I sent this photo because I thought I looked fucking bad yes, in yes. it. So actually, like, why do people get... I do, look, I, I don't mean to be insensitive. I get why people would be upset. But I'm also like, you like the photo because you sent it. There's nothing wrong with being naked. You have a great body. And there's nothing wrong with being sexual. Especially when it's like to their boyfriends or husbands. Or but something. the like, issue is the that you girls don't just take one photo. You take 30 before you choose the right one. And then a lot of them, maybe the off cut get left in, in iCloud no, the stuff that would end up in the cutting room floor gets all published well that I, I would be mortified that's what <laughs> like, I mean no not that photo yeah, that's what I mean this that's one. what I mean I would just be like guys I'll just look just promise me you won't put that one and I'll give you a better one yeah well, I like it, but I don't think you have a choice because it's some Russian pervert slash hacker yeah I think if it's a hacker you don't have a choice that's what if I it mean. was the press there would oh, yeah. absolutely be a game oh, of course chess it would. yeah of course there would be um, an umbrella now obviously an ex-partner Give me someone an umbrella. Yeah, that's pretty shit. Unless it was like a designer umbrella. Like if you got no. me a Chanel umbrella, with like a black one with like the big white Chanel emblem, I'd be like, that's sick. Unless you gave me an umbrella like Penguin has out of Batman where I can rotate it, hypnotises people, fires guns at the end of it, or like, or, or uses a helicopter. Why have the new Batman films not had Penguin in? Because he's without a doubt is, is the it, Is it in the new one? Oh, is it? Who's is playing it? him? Senor Penguin. <laughs> <laughs> the guy from Happy Pingu. Feet. Pingu has is maybe he's progressed from kids movies to actual movies. Have you seen the duck in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas that with like the rotating yeah. head? Yeah, terrifying. That they they open in the morning. Yeah. That could be anyway. Uh, right, an extension lead, and it wasn't funny. <laughs> uh, a saucepan, specifically for making sauce. A saucier is the guy that makes sauces in in a in a restaurant. Just letting you know that. Very um, good. I'd quite like a sauce saucepan, but I don't know how to make sauces. Even though when I'd, I've cooked you moon, I've made sorry, a white sorry. sauce and stuff. Is, and I am aware that I cannot say this word. It's a saucepan, not always just for making sauces. You would think that, but I don't think so. There's a range of sizes and specific ones. Um, penis shaped pasta. I would take it. What, the penis or the penis shaped pasta? Both. Classic you. Um, an oven glove and tea towels very nearly used to suffocate the bastard. <laughs> oven <laughs> gloves and the tea towels, like that is, couldn't be more of a sexist thing. Loads of soap. <laughs> <laughs> Men went through this phase where they would go into Lush in Covent Garden. I'm a Londoner, but I'm yeah. sure that this will apply to anybody else. Right, fucking Dick Van Dyke. I'm a Londoner. Chim chim <laughs> chim chim like chim in the hat. chim 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 are we listening to that in the car later? <laughs> we should. Oh my God, I'm laughing remembering it. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Last year, I bought my boyfriend a Nintendo Switch and he bought me a neck pillow. Okay. Uh, right. <laughs> I got absolutely wankered on Christmas Eve a few years ago and pissed up the tree and all over the presents. Oh, I have a story like this. Do you? I have two stories like this. Go on, then, fire So, 
first thing on the Christmas tree, my dad. <laughs> a couple of Christmases ago, my dad was filling up his uh, car with petrol, and it was in London. It was icy and snowy, and when he went to the into the um, station to pay, he slipped on like black ice and fell down and like fucked his elbow, fucked his back so much that he ended up having to have surgery. Anyway. They gave him these like really strong painkillers right off the bat and sent him home. Um, <laughs> so he was drinking and taking these like super strong painkillers and he went all funny. Like me and my brothers were like sitting on the stairs watching him in the kitchen. And me and there's a few of us, like there's four of us in total, just sat there watching him in the kitchen. And he was just walking around the kitchen, like talking to himself, saying like mostly inaudible things, then every now and again be like, the fuckers have drunk all the gin. <laughs> me and my brothers don't drink gin, we just don't touch gin. So we were like, wow, dad's really pissed. Like, we didn't know he was taking yeah. painkillers. We were like, he's really fucked. Anyway, we, <laughs> we went to bed that night. The Christmas tree was, as, as you would expect, green with baubles on it. Yes. Came down the next morning, the whole Christmas tree, and I mean every branch from top to bottom, covered in fake snow. <laughs> and there were like four cans of fake no under the tree and we were like who did this like when we all went to bed and we were the last ones in bed like what has happened and my dad came down he was like this is so weird we couldn't figure it out but an hour later he was like cooking christmas lunch and he was like oh my god i remembered what happened he slept walk it slept walk is that how what is the past tense? slept walked slept walked in the night came down to the tree took out these cans of fake snow that we had, but we decided not to use because we thought they were tacky, covered the whole tree in fake snow, woke up while he was finishing off the job, was like mortified, dropped the cans and went to bed. So he'd got up and done that, which I thought was absolutely I love hilarious. that from your dad. I want to meet Hi Richard. Oh my God, he's so funny when he's like, like I've only ever seen it once or twice, like, but it's when he like mixes painkillers with drinking. It's just mm. so funny. Terrible combination. And then, <laughs> nobody do that. And then uh, another story, once my very first boyfriend, Ben, I woke up. you never quite got over? He'd go, no, oh, we're that? like, we're good. So we were together for like five years and he was like a big like drum and bass raver. So yeah. he would like go out all night and he left school at 16. So he would like go out all night raving. He was a, a club promoter. He had two really big nights in Manchester. <clears throat> Platoon, if anyone's listening and into drum and bass, I'm sure you know it. Um, he had two really big nights and that was his job. I was still in school, so I had to go to sleep at like a normal mm. hour. Once I woke up at like four in the morning and I could hear, like, you know, when you pour water out of something and it yeah. like hits a hard surface, yeah. like I can't do the noise. Yeah. And I could hear it. No, it hits a hard surface. Oh, fine. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I woke up and I was like, what the fuck is that? And I looked around the room and I could see Ben in the corner of the room. And I was like, what was he doing? I turned on my bedside light. He was peeing into my mum's that she'd given me vintage brown leather mulberry bag. And it's never been the same. Oh, what? Because it smells or it's been stained? It's stained and it smells. Yeah. Well, I washed it. Yeah. But yeah, it was bad. Yeah, fucked it. I mean, I, we've got a very good friend who was, um, was at our wedding, master ceremonies. Won't mention his full name. Robbie. Stop <laughs> dobbing people in. You're such a bitch. Funny. Robbie got steaming. Robbie and I went, used to go out on Christmas Eve, um, Christmas Eve evening every year. Um, and uh, to a place in Ascot, and we used to get steamed up. Oh, and I gosh. and I went home. Rugby boys. Posh rugby boys. We used to get steaming in Ascot. Ascot, darling. Fuck off. Right. And uh, Robbie went back that year, and he shat in the wardrobe. <laughs> um, and his mum came in and went fucking mad on Christmas Eve. Called him a dirty pig, a re- home wrecker. Um, and basically, the whole of Christmas was ruined because he shat in the wardrobe. <laughs> He and this is like the, the best behaved person. They're the nicest, best behaved, kindest, sweetest, most intense person shat in the wardrobe. Intense. It's not no, intense. no, int- intensely kind. Sorry, what? Yes. Not like as intense. I was like, like, yeah, I'm not- a serial killer. I think um, we're more intense than he is. Um, I've also got a couple of other Christmas nightmares for people who've done stuff terribly. I said, um, it, basically, uh, where am I here? A guy went back on uh, Christmas Eve night to a girl's house um, and he woke up early and tried to do the growing up thing of like sneaking out before she woke up, obviously, on Christmas Day. Um, and as he was getting dressed, he noticed her dog was lying on the floor next to bed, furiously licking the inside of her knickers. It almost vomited and legged it out there as fast as possible. That makes me feel sick. Ah, makes imagine me feel that. Sick. 
Imagine that. It's terrifying. Oh, Bertie. She's like, Ugh, don't talk to me about that. So, yeah, buying clothes is always a bit of a nightmare, but there's a story here that I think um, is, is an interesting one, mainly from a man's point of view, not necessarily a woman's, but we got this sent in from someone asking about Christmas sort of problems. I was once on holiday with the lads in the US, and before coming home, was trying to panic buy something for the missus for Christmas. Couldn't remember any of her sizes, so found a girl in the shop that looked the same shape as her and asked her to try on some clothes for me. To my surprise, she said yes. She was keener than I thought, so I kept getting skimpier and skimpier in the outfits I was choosing. It was fantastic. Anyway, the missus was delighted with what I chose, and it fit perfectly. Massive Brian points to me. James, what are your tactics for buying clothes for Chloe? Don't do it. Don't do it unless she's specifically shown you something out. Because that's the key that men always forget, because men don't really listen. Is you walk past and say, what do you, what do you like, and get specifics, and then go and come back to it later. Yeah. Otherwise, I'd never spontaneously try to buy any clothing for anyone. I, I highly doubt that he told her how he managed to find something. No, of course he didn't tell her how he managed to find it. Just but skimpy and skimpy and skimpy. I mean, I would be fuming if you did that. <laughs> like, really angry. Yeah, but maybe I was trying different things. Like, could you come back out on a thong? Just to see where it fitted. <laughs> no? Oh, God. See, this is where, like, in my internal head, I go sexist when I just go, I hate men. <laughs> yeah. We know that. It's become abundantly clear on this podcast. Um, Isn't it so funny that I married the manliest of men? This is difficult when you go around to your in-laws and parents and try to get away with a bit of, like, do you have sex in your parents' house? I like, at yeah. Christmas? I do. Like, even these special occasions, do you think it's worth, like, do, do well, you it know? Depends, it depends on the house. Like, my parents are nowhere near my room. Fine. Nowhere near it. So it's absolutely not a problem. However, if we were wall-to-wall, fuck no. Absolutely not. Do you have any advice, though, for people to survive this Christmas period with families because mums can get quite possessive of their sons and being in a, in a yeah. tight family relationship can be a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I'll tell you how to survive it. Fine. Be like water. Fluid, move, doesn't matter. Not about you. Family dynamics are tricky even when they're your family. If you're talking about your partner's family, it's got fuck all to do with you. All the issues are set in stone. Don't take it personally. If any, this is what I do with your family. Mm-hmm. Any drama... Mm-hmm. that I'm either involved in or just observing just find entertaining like just laugh at mm. it because it's got nothing to do with me if there's a drama kicking off even if it's about me because I'm like this is just like so far out of my control you just sit back and just laugh and, be, and also like enjoy it and be compassionate like look you know this is my first Christmas with somebody else's fam well it was going to be because we're not doing it yeah. now because everyone's in tier four it was going to be my first christmas with somebody else's family like i've not had christmas with my family before but i've not been with anyone anyone's family um and that would have been really hard for me just again personal fucked up reasons yeah. that would have been really difficult for me but then i thought you know what it's christmas do it with compassion like go and make other people happy like they're, they're with their son or their daughter and you're there and you're all a family together even if they annoy the fuck out of you it's a really nice thing to do and their problem isn't your problem yeah you know them you know you can't make their you can't fix them so you know their their baggage and their shit is theirs so exactly. just roll with it yeah now we talked at the top of the show about us having a little bit of a review this we're coming to the end of 20th show mm. it's almost the end of the year we won't be back until certainly um mid-January or end of January if we are. What's been your highlights of Couples Quarantine? Um, I think the Russell Kane episode. He's Obviously, fantastic. Yeah, I've known him for ages. Um, you, I, I, knew, I knew him before you, but you got closer to him really quick, didn't you? I always do that like a creep. Um, I always find it really... I love watching him do his stand-up, and I think he's so, so funny. And having him on Couples Quarantine being just as funny as he was in stand-up... Like, I, I just thought it was such it was such a pleasure to have him on. And I think he's fucking brilliant. And I feel sad for him that he is now getting the career success that he's been working so hard for for so long. Um, and now he can't work. I mean, I, I find that really, really upsetting. So I'm glad that we I'm glad that we gave him a little bit of a window to just be his funny old self. What about you? Do you know what's real? I, look, I've loved every single guest. I think they've brought so many different perspectives on everything. It's mm. made me think, you know, from Salma El I think she was your favourite. Uh, well, it's just, I mean, she's just she's the antithesis of, of everything I am. You know, she's she's a strong feminist woman who has 
you know, uh, is very staunch values. And, and has I think, a strong religious background Yeah, as well. and I thought that was really kind of interesting. Um, those internal struggles, you know, being an outspoken Muslim woman, being, you know, sexualising herself. That was really interesting. I love Sam Dowell. I thought it was brilliant. Mm. And there's so many misnomers about um, gay men and, and everything else. I thought it was really interesting. I think everybody's brought a, a, something brilliant. You know, Jack Whitehall... You know, revealing that he, you know his dad got so dehydrated he had to hold his hand while his dad shat himself silly in a in a, yeah. in a forest somewhere. Everybody was fantastic. You know, including my my, my best mate Paul and Jones, his wife Zoe. You know, tips for for surviving. Um, you know, ch- children, how to keep the sex Everyone life going. Everyone I know that listened to that you said to me, "Are they like they are the dream couple? Like, are they really that dreamy in real life?" And I yeah. was like, "Yeah, they are. They just do you know what's so good about Doris and Zoe? They're just very independent." Yeah. Like they do their own thing. They like they don't not like me and you. Like they don't live in each other's pockets. They very much do their own thing. But at the same time, then they have kids together, so they have this big kind of tie yeah. of life together. Yeah, and I they just, communicate and I think, really well as well. Well, yeah, because remember he was saying he didn't used to be like that. No, and I don't know how she's done it. She needs to write a book for women how to train your partner into being able to communicate. Because I can't remember the last time I didn't have a deep and meaningful with Doz. Doz loves a deep and meaningful, especially after a few drinks. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I look. I've really enjoyed the, the 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 podcast. I think it's been really fun and exciting. And what's really blown me away over everything has been the amount of people who have written in. You know, yeah. every week people have been writing to CQ questions at jameshaskell.org. Uh, we're obviously still going to get the emails for, for series two if we do it. Um, and I've been blown away by it. Blown away by the number of interactions. You I know, love like, like how so many of these. This is all the emails printed out. I've got about six hundred more. Do you know what's so funny is that like. Everybody who writes in, it always says, love the show, love the honesty, really respect that you're just like, bored out, just telling it how it is. Like, here's my story, I want to tell you my story, and they want us to read it out. And I think that's like the biggest barometer as to whether or not we're doing anything worth doing. Because look, let's be honest, it's just me and you in front of my microphone yeah. chatting shit for an hour, Change right? Shit. But that to me means it's worth doing. Yeah, agreed. But it's so interesting then, that like, the big brands and stuff are really terrified mm. of couples quarantine. They don't want to work with us because they feel like we're quote unquote controversial and offensive. Now, look, it is true that if you're honest, then obviously some people are going to find you offensive and some people are going to find it controversial. But the irony in that is that like honesty is the one thing that bands us all together. Like it's, it's so interesting. So I don't think we would have carried on doing it, to be honest, had it not been for you guys. And I'm so happy that we did. Yeah. And the audience has continuously grown, which is amazing. And I think people are intimidated. There's a lot of people out there pretending. Just look at Christmas adverts. Yeah. Pretending that we're all running through fields, having the best time, <laughs> no one argues, no one has problems, we're all, it's the best thing ever. It's not. The real world is shit, hard, difficult, families are hard, you know, everything's hard and you've got to be honest about it. And, you know, people have sex, people smell, people shit, <laughs> shit, piss, get ill and you've got to own it. Yes, you don't have to necessarily rub it in everybody's faces, but you can talk about it and, and bring, you know, shed light on it. And I think one thing we've done is hopefully... You know, brought some awareness. But what I wanted to finish with before we got one more question, which is really be directed at you, was we we sort of wanted to do a mean tweets because we've had some ama- we've had some unbelievable feedback on everything we've done, but we've had some incredible me- some mean tweets. And I'm going to read one, and Chloe's going to read one, and it goes like this. This is on our um, iTunes. It's entitled "Why." <laughs> no, disagree <laughs> already. I already. I already agree. I'm already on board. Okay, so I have never made a podcast. Granted, I'm not a serial hater. Some podcasts are just not for me. But there is a point where comment is necessary. This is simply a pile of bilge from a couple of fortunate souls riding the wave of lockdown as the embers of their celebrity flicker. I don't think I ever regard myself as a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity either. Okay. Celebrity is an opportunity for, for bringing change and compassion or just fun. Is it? Is it really? I didn't realise that was a thing. Yeah, I agree. I think it is fun, though. So okay. that's a matter of opinion. This pod- podcast falls flat on all counts. Swipe yeah. away swipe away this dumb tri- tripe from talentless and ugly people. I find it it's personal. What's, what's well, I mean, I don't know that, if, that we're, you know, aesthetically attractive. I don't think we're going to win any awards for, like, modelling. But I do think you that you would. are incredibly talented because you've got 77 caps for England. What the hell does this guy have? And I've got consistent podcasts in the top 10. But don't worry about it. Fine. Um, you don't need to search for far for, for piles of quality. And yes, maybe hate is going to hate, but we're all better than this. Thankfully, for the next pandemic, these two will be useful for the family quiz where you try to remember the names of, of C-list has-beens. I mean, I'll take it. I would 100% take a C-list. I want to be an answer on a celebrity quiz. I think I was an answer 
wants to run um who wants to be a millionaire qualifying question once shut up who's the what, what celebrity couple's daughter is named chloe and it was rich and judy i was like do you want to read that one this is, this is, i love this though it, i just it, it makes me laugh so much Okay. This isn't, what's it called? <laughs> Awful. <laughs> You're welcome. If you think being a man makes you supreme and you have no sense of equality, this podcast is for you. Aggressive language and outdated ideas form the basis of a shallow show. <laughs> that sounds like my CV. I actually really don't disagree with a lot of it, though. But the thing is, is, I have to agree. Why? But I listen to a lot of podcasts and I think, why? Shag Married Annoyed is number one in the charts yes. every week. Yes. And I listen to it. I listen to one yes. episode and I was like, good for them. Not like that. that I'm so happy for them that they did that but why it's just two people talking yeah. same with like a lot of podcasts it's like why yeah. but you just do it because it's fun and exactly. if you get listeners there you go nobody has to listen don't listen while operating heavy machinery good warning this kind of podcast that makes the listener start to question whether modern podcast technology is uh, of a net benefit to society or whether the old days of talk radio were in fact preferable in every way talk radio instead of things sir um the fact that this couple will feel the need to air this semi-therapeutic drivel is a sad indictment of the times we live in. They, they write really well. Articulate. You know, like all of them have written yeah. quite well, even though they're so angry. Right? I was driving a tractor at the time, and at one stage, I was so mesmerised by the sheer idiocy of the conversation that I drove over a fence and into a wall, waking up from my reverie with a shock and reaching for the pause button before I did myself or the tractor further damage. Haskell is a very skilled podcaster. Thank True. you. When it comes to rugby and some of his interviews are genuinely interesting, but this, well, it just isn't. <laughs> I love it. Now, I will say this. What a flanker has a purpose. You have kind of people with um, a name or a reputation on yeah. and you talk to them about their life. Yeah. I don't disagree that this is a bit pointless, but... No, it's not. Isn't that we're partly agon- what makes listen, it so easy? It is, but we're also agony on. So like how many people have written in problems? We've like, we, we run out of problems. Yeah, well, we're not qualified. But yeah, but, but it's like I want it to be something fun, interactive for, for to people's agony aunts for us to discuss stuff. I'd like to say we've got like a re- reasonable worldview. Like, yes, we come from, I come from a privileged background. We have these things, but still worldly wise. Like, I don't turn up to work on my fucking penny farthing with a silver spoon in and around my ass. I understand, you know, no one would life. Be shocked if you did that. No, no one would be shocked. But I, I think we, we we offer something different, and actually, some of it's quite funny. It's meant to be light entertainment. If you want to go to a fu- if you want real therapy, go to a fucking therapist. Don't come to the Haskells. We know nothing apart from being lols and drinking. <laughs> Just drinking through podcasts. Right, there's two more, and then we're done. Rubbish. Pretty, <laughs> pretty rubbish chat. First episode was all right. Second one was worse. Don't listen to the show if you need intellectual, stim- intellectual stimulation or even a good laugh. Presenters have no concern at all about using inclusive language, and they don't contribute anything. To developing a better society, I wouldn't recommend. What a terrible case of affairs. Right. I loved it. Uh, thank you so much for all of those who took the time <laughs> to write out such articulate feedback. It was, it was, someone's you know, actually written, sorry, just one more because I know Chloe's right on us, but someone's written, so cringe and horrendowdy, right? Which I don't, I mean, they're trying to write horrendous. I like and then horrendous. someone's gone, disgusting. Right, let me read how they spell this D I S C U S T E N G. Teng. Disgust, Teng. This was disgusting. disgusting. So cringe and horrendaudy. <laughs> I love it. Right. Last we question. do actually have a lot of really nice Oh, listen, of course we do, but it's not, they're not funny people being really nice, is it? Life's not about that. I love, I was like, mean tweets. I really enjoy it. I don't think it's serious. Right. This is just an email, and it says, basically, um, two years of being together, let's say um, between two to four stone they've gained, and especially since March, lockdown, furlough, etc. I love going to the gym and being active, but my downfall is motivation, having the self-discipline to actually get up and out of the house. I try my best, but if my partner suggests not go doing it, and the classic, shall we go tomorrow, I'm already in my comfies on the sofa. I previously worked in the fitness industry at Albeit a while back, so I'm pretty good with knowing... Albeit. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Um, I'm capable of combining a simple program for me and her to follow. I want to be able to just crack on and hope she follows. Uh, I have heard you suggest to others about going to classes together, but my partner wouldn't do this in a million years because of how self-conscious she is about her current weight. I say that everyone is in the gym for a reason and no one is looking or cares about anyone else, but it doesn't work. I'd be grateful for any advice you can give us, me, to help us get on back on track. Thanks in advance and keep up the great work. Tubby Lesbian. I didn't, that's what she's written, like, that's on the document. Um, it's so funny how people talk about themselves and how, I don't know, I, I don't know. Um, okay, Because so, basically, the reason we're going to put that, finish on that last question is, is, is that there's a lot of pressure, New Year, New You, people are going to eat whatever they want, they're going to have Christmas rails, going to fall out, people are going to gain weight. 
What would be your advice? Because you're running your, your online coaching and then you've got the oh, EC yeah, method yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Chloe made it. You've got all the stuff going on. You're the perfect person to give some sage advice. Well, yeah, uh, I don't want to use this as a platform to self-promote, but we have a ton of women and one oh. lesbian coach at the helm um, on, you, our, on, our, <laughs> on our group coaching platform called the EC method. And we have loads of couples as well. Um, both same-sex couples and married couples. So, uh, you know, if you just go on my Instagram, you, you could join up and follow it and we could coach you. So there's that. But aside from that, let's just park that for a minute. Um, all you need to do is get, like, it doesn't even have to be a Fitbit. It could just be a pedometer or something. You don't have to start by going to the gym by any means. Um, start hitting 10 to 12,000 steps a day. So just go on one or two walks every day with your partner. So they, so she doesn't feel insecure um, about being in the gym with people. Start to tighten up your diet. Um, I know a lot of people are really like put off by tracking calories. Um, but honestly, uh, if you want to have a bit more freedom in your diet, is then eat what you normally eat, but maybe just slightly less of it. Or eat more than you've ever eaten before, but come out at a, an appropriate calorie intake for fat loss. Um, which for women, generally, typically be, t- seems to be somewhere around that 1500 a day mark. Um, cleaning up your diet and do it and, and kind of looking at calories if you do these two things, you can have significant weight loss inside of a period of, of eight weeks. I mean, significant, I know, because I do this for a living and I've done this for many women. Um, when and when you feel comfortable to get to a gym, get into a gym and start lifting some weights as well as continuing to hit those step goals. And not only will you transform your body um, from a, you know, like a physique standpoint, an aesthetic standpoint, you're also going to greatly increase your immediate health um, and also your longevity of life and also your quality of life, your ability to fight off disease, survive disease. I mean, you're doing a huge, huge service to your body. Um, and you don't actually, when, when you get to a point where you have lost the weight, although I would say focus more on losing fat, not weight, because the latter isn't a very good thing at all. Um, when you have lost a significant amount of body fat, guess what? We can increase your calories and you can stop dieting. I think people think that they have to be on a diet forever. You fucking don't. Um, that's the answer. Um, so yeah, I would say go look at look at my Instagram, come on the EC method. I'm also taking a much smaller group of clients, just me, in January. So that's an option. Um, and sometimes paying for something makes you accountable. You yeah, you every time I've done a plan for friends, they don't fucking no. do it. Not they maybe one day, if that, they don't fucking do it because I don't make them pay and then and they're not accountable. Sometimes actually saying, No, I'm paying for this, I should do it is a huge motivation in and of itself. And I think the one thing, one of you's got to decide who's gonna be the one that's leading the charge. Every couple you can't both be have you know, two two sheep. You need a shepherd and what you've got to decide if this is your thing and you want to do it, you're gonna to have to lead it. So when she says go and sit on the sofa, you're gonna to have you to say no. no, you have to dig in, you have to decide. And sometimes it's hard, but everyone needs a leader and you've got to be the leader in that relationship on those terms. Chloe, it's Christmas Eve. Yes. We've done with twenty episodes of Couples Quarantine. Merry Christmas. You're fit. Let's get steaming. If you like this podcast, you please share. You just said we're not winning any awards for who's good looking. <laughs> and then you're like, you're really No, fit. I said you were fit. Go back and watch the tape. I said you're fit. I'm not winning any awards. Thanks so much for tuning in to 20 episodes. We love you guys. Please um, follow our social media channels, Couples Quarantine, Couples Quarantine Pod. Send your uh, questions and, and problems and solutions to cqquestions at jameshaskell.org. If you like this video, like this podcast, please share, please subscribe. Please give us some feedback. Even if you hate us, let us know. I'm James Haskell. I'm Chloe Millie. Merry motherfucking Christmas to all of you and we'll catch you all in the new year.